Once, not so long ago, there was a thriving land of lush green valleys. Its hills covered with deep, dense forests. Its meadows filled with roaming marsupials and its seas bursting with myriads of fish. Then in nights of destruction and fire it was overwhelmed. Its fertile plains succumbed to crushing ice. Today it is bleak and bitterly cold. Today no one dreams Antarctica was once a tropical paradise. And I have question that's haunting me What an amazing way to appreciate the vastness of the Ross ice shelf. Once you're up above this in helicopters, you can see the size of this sheer ice jutting out into the sea. Five and six hundred metres high, stretching for as far as you can see in every direction. The ice goes right down deep into the sea and slowly breaks off, forming icebergs. Here we are, back on board. What an amazing journey. Hi, I'm Peter Mungo Jupp. Welcome to Antarctica. This is the coldest place on Earth, and it's covered by an ice sheet four kilometres thick. It holds 90% of the world's ice. Were the lush forests that once grew in Antarctica and the animals that once roamed slowly overwhelmed by the deposition of ice? Or was it a dramatic event that perhaps ended in a few days? was once a tropical paradise just like this. Pleasant beaches, lush forests and lakes filled with magnificent wildlife. How do we know this? In some places where we can penetrate the ice sheets, we find incredible fossils. Fossils of great tropical plants, marsupials and even in some cases dinosaurs. Wildlife on this frozen continent was once plentiful. Modern archaeologists believe that this occurred millions of years ago, but
but I believe Antarctica, as recently as 5,000 years ago, was this tropical paradise. So just how old are these ice sheets? Are they millions of years old? As most scientists and archaeologists would have you believe? Or are they perhaps only a few thousand years old? And that's my personal belief. Now, there's two lines of evidence to check this out. Firstly, there's these very old sea maps. They're surprising. We'll show you those shortly. And secondly, there's the ice core experiments. They've been performed not only on the Antarctic, but the Greenland ice sheet. Are they believable? And if they do show that this ice sheet's relatively young, just how was it formed? Was it a very quick catastrophic event or perhaps it took thousands of years to lay down. We're going to find out, Max. Come on, let's go. Okay, so here was the coast of South America on the Piri remaps. Mm -hmm. And over here was Antarctica coming up here, showing all the coastline with rivers and everything like that. So Peter, is it possible that maps from the time of the pharaohs show Antarctica ice free? I believe that's exactly what happened, Carly. Early last century, the 500-year-old maps of the Turkish Admiral Piri Ray were rediscovered on a gazelle skin hoary with age. One man, Professor Charles H. Hapgood, was fascinated by this impossible map. He sent it to the US Air Force Cartography Group for evaluation, the claim that the lower part of the map portrays the Princess Martha coast of Queen Maud Land, Antarctic, and the Palmer Peninsula is reasonable. We find that this is the most logical and in all probability, the correct interpretation of the map. The geographical details shown in the lower part of the map agrees very remarkably with the results of the seismic profile made across the top of the ice cap by the Swedish-British Antarctic Expedition. This indicates that the coastline had been mapped before it was covered by the ice cap. It shows Antarctica ice free. The ice cap in this region is now about a mile thick. We've no idea how the data on this map can be reconciled with the supposed state of geographical knowledge in 1513. Is it possible that maps from the time of the pharaohs show Antarctica ice free? Let's continue our investigation. Perhaps even more spectacular are the Orontius Phineas maps drawn by French cartographer Orontz Fine. These show the whole of Antarctica again ice free. Admittedly, it is too close to the tip of South America and it is incorrectly orientated. Yet, the proportions seem similar. The coastal mountains, found in the 1957 geophysical study, are in roughly the right places and so are many bays and rivers. And the close resemblance between a modern, scientifically exact map of the Ross Sea and Phineas unnamed Gulf is striking. How is this second map possible? Before Antarctica was covered in ice sheets, yep. there was a big continent yeah. separated by a sea and a long peninsula. That's dead right, Kyle. In fact, uh, if we pretend this is Antarctica, this was the big continent rising up to about 6,000 foot, something yep. like that. Then there was the sea with a number of islands and then over here, the Antarctic Peninsula, what today is covered with up to five kilometres of ice, Carly. It's just incredible. And then one day something really big happened and it dumped ice.
The ice sheet formation in Antarctica was catastrophic. Didn't take many, many years. Probably happened very quickly.